you guys are interested in being a member, then click the join button down below to check out the available perks. The first tier is only $1. Thank you to those of you who choose to join. What's up Mod Squad, welcome to another Division 2 build breakdown video. Before we get into the video, if you already subscribed to me then don't forget to smash that like button as it really helps push our videos into a recommended session which in turn helps the channel grow. Interaction is a big part of what helps us in the YouTube algorithm and the extra support is very much appreciated. Now if you play quite a bit of Countdown you'd have noticed the majority of the enemies within the new mode are elites. In today's video I'll showcase a build that will allow you to tank mass amounts of damage from not only elite heavies, robotics and bosses but the hunter as well. You'll literally be able to stand in a crowd of elites and tank their focus fire. Now the reason this build can tank so much elite NPC damage is because it has 70% protection from elites. So if you're struggling to stay alive in countdown, protection from elites is going to help you majorly. In order to reach such high percentage of protection from elites, you'll need improvised gear. Improvised gear has no brand set bonuses or talents but allows you extra mod slots on your holster, gloves and knee pads, which will help you gain an extra 36% protection from elites. You can craft improvised gear pieces at the crafting station if you have the blueprints. This build is also designed to benefit from taking the damage thanks to the new exotic catharsis mask. Taking damage builds stacks to a cap of 30, each stack grants 1% weapon damage. Taking damage at match stacks triggers a purge, removing all stacks and status effects and then dropping a healing cloud which restores 5% of your max armor for 10 seconds to all allies in the cloud. Now if you're looking to get this exotic mask you need to hit level 90 the season reward track or you can get it from exotic caches. On top of this build being able to tank damage and benefit from it, it's also very lethal to all enemies including the strongest enemy in the game, that being the hunters. The reason it's so lethal is because of the exotic Scorpio shotgun. The reason hunters are dangerous is because of the sheer amount of damage they put out and the Scorpio shotgun makes that extremely difficult for them to do. The Scorpio does this by applying status effects that prevent the hunter shooting back at you. States effects such as poison, disorient and shot. It's these states effects which are going to allow you safety and time in which to kill them in. Now because this build is heavily specced into protection, it doesn't exactly melt, but this build can gain extra damage from stacking damage talents such as Vindictive or Finisher. What you also have to take into account is that the countdown game mode gives you damage buffs as well, so not having the highest initial damage is not a huge negative on this build. As you can see by the gameplay, it doesn't struggle. To make the most of this build, you'll need an aggressive playstyle to keep both damage and armor stacks active. The more you kill, the stronger you get. The build's also perfect for all horror content in the open world, whether that's control points, bounties, or the summit. Now we have spoke a little bit about the build and I'll showcase some of what it's capable of. Let's get into a quick build breakdown. And if you haven't already, don't forget to smash that like button to help us hit that 500 like goal. Right guys, starting off with a specialization and we are using the survivalist. The main reason is because it gives us the 10% increase protection from elites. Another great thing is we get 15% increased outgoing healing, which I believe will apply to the heal you drop from the Catharsis mask, which is going to help heal your teammates. We also have the fire grenade, which is going to help us proc the vindictive talent on our secondary. Our armor kit also repairs over 5 seconds instead of instantly, but also applies to the group members within 20 meters. And that is pretty much it for the specialization guys, so with that said, let's move on to the build. So starting off with our primary weapon, we had the exotic shotgun, the Scorpio. Moving down to the talent, septic shock. As I mentioned earlier guys, it has those status effects that cripple NPCs. Shooting the target applies stacks of venom, which lasts for 10 seconds. Increasing stacks as more severe debuffs to the target. 1 is poison, 3 is disorient, 6 is shock, 7 targets take additional 20% damage. From all sources, stacks no longer increase. Duration of status effects is based on percentage of pellets hit on applying shock. When it comes to the attachments on this weapon, we have 10% reload speed on the magazine, 10% weapon handling on the grip, 10% stability on the muzzle, and 10% critical hit chance on the scope. Moving on to our secondary and we have the Grudge SMG. The reason we're using the Grudge is because it gives us the perfect vindictive talent. Killing an enemy with a status effect applied grants you and your allies within 20 meters, 18% critical hit chance and 18% critical hit damage for 20 seconds. So another part of this build which is going to help benefit your teammates. We have 5% crit chance on the scope, 20 extra rounds in a magazine, 5% crit chance on the laser pointer and 5% crit hit damage on the flash hider. Onto our sidearm, and yes we have the Orbit, if you do not have the Orbit then I recommend using the TDI card which comes with an extra skill tier and you can roll finisher onto that. Looking at the Orbit though it has the perfect finisher talent, swapping from this weapon within 10 seconds of killing an enemy grants 35% critical hit chance and 40% critical hit damage for 15 seconds and you can stack Vindictive and Finisher together. When it comes to the attachments we have 20% reload speed and 10% accuracy. Right guys, get into the build, show you a quick overview. I know some of you like to see the build like this before we get into the pieces. So starting off with the exotic Catharsis mask. 
As you can see, 170k armor, we have 18.3% income and repairs, 4.3k armor regen, and 12% protection from Elite's fire and mod. And now that we had the countdown game mode, it's going to be the best place to farm for these mods, guys, and you can get up to 13% protection from Elite's. Looking down at the talent, as I went over earlier, guys, Vicious Cycle. If you want to read over that in greater detail, feel free to pause the video. Moving on to the chest piece, we have a Seska chest piece giving us 10% critical hit chance. We have 170k armor, rank 3 proficiency rank, 10.3% critical hit damage, 5.3% critical hit chance, and 12% protection from elites via a mod. And when it comes to the talents, guys, we are using Intimidate. Yes, Intimidate. The newly changed Intimidate. Nerfed, changed, however you want to put it. While you have bonus armor, gain one stack each second up to a max of 7. Each stack increases weapon damage by 5% to enemies within 10 meters. All stacks are lost when you have no bonus armor. Now this is a run and gun build so you're going to be in the thick of the fight majority of the time. So having this talent active is going to be up more often than not. And it's honestly been pretty nice to use. I don't think this is a talent that you'll be able to use in PvP anymore but it's still pretty good for PvE. Moving on to the holster now and we have an improvised holster. For those of you who don't know you craft these at the crafting station. You can't farm for these pieces guys you have to craft them at the crafting station. We have 170k armor, 10.8% critical hit damage, 6% critical hit chance and 12% potential from elites. The great thing about improvised gear guys is it gives you another mod slot on pieces that you wouldn't usually get a mod slot on. So your holster, knee pads and gloves. Moving on to our Grupo Sombra backpack giving us 15% critical hit damage, we have 15% weapon damage, 4.7% critical hit chance, 12% critical hit damage and 12% protection from elites via a mod and then we add the Adrenaline Rush talent. Whenever you are within 10 meters of an enemy, gain 20% bonus armor for 5 seconds, stacks up to 3 times. Cooldown is 5 seconds. So this talent pairs very nicely with the Intimidate talent still. Onto the gloves and we have improvised gloves, give us 15% weapon damage, 5.5% crit chance, 12% critical hit damage and 12% protection from elites via a mod. And finally onto the knee pads we have the fox prayers giving us the 15% weapon damage and 8% damage to targets out of cover which is multiplicative damage and 5.2% critical hit chance. Now it is preference on whether you want to use a contractor gloves or the fox prayer knee pads, either way you can swap out an improvised piece for either of those and you'll still get your mod slot. When it comes to skills it is your preference. And that is pretty much it for the build guys, so with that said, let's get into the stat sheet. I'm not going to talk through it, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about the build down in the comment section below. Don't forget to smash that like button as we have that 500 like goal here on the channel that we never miss. And the like goal helps us grow. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button for lots more Division 2 content. And with that said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out Mob Squad.